ribbed for your pleasure or shove it up your ass. <laughs> Why the hell is it designed like that? It looks like a ruffled potato chip. <laughs> it's not the same as a BMP-1 or the STRV-103s with the bar armor on top. So this provides a little bit more armor on somewhat thin armor for the BMPs as well as the STRV-103s. So providing additional space armor practically. But this thing is designed like that. It's not like welded on top of the slope armor. So that's a new one. But BZ-166 Tier 8 normal Chinese rocket heavy tank. Comes with a fancy hull design. But the commander cupola looks a little bit bigger for my taste. Especially compared to the BZ-176 that just released premium tier 8. So this thing could be a little bit weaker, which is normal for tier 8 vehicles compared to the premium counterparts for some reason. <laughs> Alright, but loader cupola is smaller than the commander cupola, which is a lot better, obviously. So it's not like the WZ-111s, but the hull size and shape is practically about the same as the WZ-111s. Alright, but yeah, the upper plate is funky designed, real funky. Uh, Dushka, and the rockets in the back. Hmm, yeah, I mean it could be like with the, the M47 improved. You could hit it, but it's a wiggling target, so it makes it hard to hit. And you don't have a turret weak spot, an upper plate weak spot, so therefore you have to hit the commander cupola in order to pin, which is a small target. But let's take a look at the initial stats. So 221 millimeters of pin, which is not half bad. 420 alpha, plays it. Uh, what kind of gun is this? I haven't checked. Give me a split second. It's a... Ugh. 122. All right. Has more alpha than the average. But all right, it's like with the... Object 252U in a sense. Reload time is a little bit long. Fine. Three seconds of aim time. Fine. It's a large caliber gun, supposedly. Well, not really. Considering the average. 0.42 accuracy. Russian. Garbage. <laughs> it's alright. 10 degrees of gun depression. That's a big one. 20 elevation. And after playing with the WZ or the BZ-176, that 10 degrees is dramatic but the commander cupola is a lot bigger so might be offsetting but 45 rounds uh same loadout for your crew so fits all the chinese heavy tanks normally top speed of 35 so a little bit faster than the 176 but not that much boosting to 53 horsepower time ratio is 13.2 which is not half bad but 35 is not fast so the downside to the 176 is it's kind of slow. <laughs> it's relatively fun considering the large derpy gun, but the commander cupola and the loader cupola is small, dramatically smaller than the 166. And this thing still has 10 degrees of gun depression, surprisingly, right? So mm, this thing doesn't have the, yeah. Horsepower per time ratio is only 10.36 with top speed of 30. So, yeah, the 166 is more mobile version of a rocket tank, practically, but has more weak spot, technically, I guess. So, four charges of the rocket boosting. Hull traverse, fat, heavy, well, not really, fat, medium, slash, heavy tank-ish. Turret traverse is somewhat slower. And boost duration is the same. And charge duration is the same as the 176, so about the same, but 1550 health, average, a little bit above average, 140 for the hull front, with that sloping and ribness, pretty good, <laughs> and 300 for the turret front, not considering the commander cupola, so it's like with the 176, it's surprisingly good at hull down. Considering the WZ-111s cannot do hull down as effectively until we reach the 5A with like 7 degrees, but that is so way long onto the tier 10s 
That's not even funny. The tier 8s have like 5 degrees of gun depression. So this thing is strong, hold down. And 10 degrees of gun depression, holy crap. I mean, you have to shoot the commander cupola, but... It's not as effective wiggling the turret back and forth, throwing off the shot. Only 24 degrees per second for the turret. View range, oh god, crap. <laughs> 350. Radio is standard, but has a standard gun compared to the derp gun, but there should be two guns available for this vehicle. But the view range is pretty crap. It's like Russian heavy tanks. Like premium Russian heavy tanks have that garbage of a view range. So this is a very close range heavy tank. Very close range. But hey, you have 140 millimeters of hull armor. It's sloped. And you can ram it into somebody like a medium tank, but it is obviously not as effective as 240 <laughs> on this thing. Now, ramming something with this is still kind of hard. You cannot turn as fast while boosting. So you have to be pretty much sure and lock onto your target in a straight line before you start to boost. But eh, <laughs> this thing is such a meme. <laughs> After the weekend of playing it, uh, high explosive round is such a gimmick. Alright, breakthrough heavy tank, like with the BZ-176, this is the 122, DPM is only 1900, meh, it's alright, with the rammer, it should go up to about 2200 or so, it's okay, but you have a large caliber gun with more alpha, so that is the scary part, 100% crew has up to 27 degrees per second for turret traverse, which is a lot better, that is the stock turret, Surprisingly smaller commander cupola compared to the upgraded turret for some reason, but wait Is this the stock turret stats? Yeah, is this a stock turret 330 meters of your age cannot depend on this all right Don't look at these stats. This is not reliable only Well 270 for the turret front on the stock turret. That's still pretty good with the larger mantlet, but Yeah stock turret cannot depend on these stats at least the stock grind won't be too difficult because Commander Cupola is not that big. Also has 10 degrees of gun depression, so pretty nice, but... Show velocity, 122, 1000 meters per second. Nice. It's alright, but it's a lot better than 800 or so for the tank destroyers, or 900 or so. So a little bit faster, but... High explosive anti tank has only 270 millimeters of pen, which is alright for a tier A heavy. Could be better, but that's into the Luva or the T 34 territory, about 300 or so. So it's alright, still workable, but not the craziest. High explosive is high explosive, yada yada. Alright, 122 with different turrets. So stock turret, you have 1900 DPM with upgraded turret. 50 more, but accuracy is about the same, surprising, get better aim time with the upgraded turret, but it's slower to turn, it has the larger commander cupola in the back, but, hmm, a little bit more health, a little bit better cheek armor for the upgraded turret, weighs a little bit more, obviously, engine power increased dramatically, so stock wise, you have about the same mobility as the 176, but when you upgrade it, Man, horsepower per time rate, wow, jumps about 50%. Yeah, horsepower per time ratio jumps dramatically. You need to have the up upgraded turret, or upgraded engine. Oh, gosh. That is big. Alright, top speed boosting is the same. Hull traverse is faster. Four charges of the boost. 10 seconds of boosting. You get less camo with the upgraded turret. A little bit more view range, and radio is a little bit better, but whatever. So, yeah, you do need, most importantly, the upgraded engine. If you want to go ramming, or just move about quickly, compared to the 176, but... Uh, upgrade path. You only get one gun? That's unfortunately. Not as, you know, diverse, I guess, compared to the higher tiers, but... At least the stock grind won't be too difficult because the turret 
and you already have the upgraded gun, practically. You already have the good gun. So, only thing you have to worry about is the engine boosting and the tracks for equipment. But, that sucks. You don't get a derp gun? Oh, that is not fun. You don't get a derp with this thing? That's unfortunate. Alright, so, equipment-wise, I still think about the same equipment as the 176. So likely a rammer, obviously, increase the DPM. About 2000 DPM is alright, but you will get that up to about 2200 with the rammer. This thing has about the same DPM, if you manage to pin all the high explosive rounds. <laughs> Which is a big if, but you deal a lot of alpha, and sometimes you deal 900 alpha. If you roll high, <laughs> onto something like an IS-7 or E-100, if you hit the weak spots, but... <laughs> It has a lot more effective hull down positioning because the commander cupola and the loader cupola is smaller when you're gun depressed compared to the size of this thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the cupola on this thing is dramatically bigger. So, rammer, vertical stabilizer to shoot while moving back and forth, and wiggle your hull around or wiggle your turret around to throw off the shots into the commander cupola, but. Yeah, that cupola is big. And likely vents for the first slot to help out with the survivability bonus. So, I think you could use a turbocharger. But this thing is more viable on the 176 because how slow it is. It's only 10.36 horsepower, uh, horsepower per time ratio. That is not good. And top speed of only 30 normally. This thing feels sluggish. So, with uh, 166, it's a lot faster. 35 for the top speed and about 15 for the horsepower per ton ratio. That is dramatically better, especially in the horsepower per ton ratio department. So, uh, I will still go with vents, vertical stabilizer, and likely rammer. Uh, accuracy is alright for a 122, I guess. Aim time is alright for a 122, you have 220 millimeters of pin, average-ish, but you still pack a punch, like with the 252Us. But the, the big upside to this thing is gun depression, freaking 10 degrees, that is dramatically better than the 252U, dramatically better. Yeah, let's see, 252U has like what, garbage? <laughs> it's been so long since I played it, uh, Russian. Tier 8. Uh, they seem like 6 degrees. Never mind. Underestimated your 5 degrees of gun depression, but. Which one has a better upper plate? I think this thing might be having a better upper plate. It's a peak uh, pike shape compared to the rib shape. It's 10 millimeter less, but it has two angling compared to just the one. Well, it is rounded. 144. Hmm, debatable, but maybe the lower plate is a bigger weak spot on the 166. The Commander Cupola is obviously a lot larger than the 252U, but the 252U has two of them compared to only one, technically. Hmm. And the gun has a little bit more alpha on the 252U and less DPM and worse accuracy. Even with a rammer, it's only about 2,000. Holy crap. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Field mods are practically not that much different for a tier 8. So we can take a look at field modification. But for equipment, I will still prefer vents, vertical stabilizer, a rammer. The casual original loadout before the equipment 2.0. But... Uh, yeah, you could put a turbocharger. I'm debating if it's worthwhile. It's alright, especially if uh, if you already have a decent horsepower per time ratio, but mm, might be a little bit better to put vents just to help out with everything else, like with the accuracy or the aim time. Alright, field modifications. Uh, it's tier 8, so no higher tier unlocks. All of them are the, about the same. So, performing better with better terrain resistance for the first one. Accuracy or aim time? Oof. 
Ah, uh, accuracy or aim time? Accuracy is already crap with the upgraded turret, 0 0.4. So if it's already garbage accuracy, if you're already fighting close range, might as well get better aim time. Like bump that up to like 0 0.41 or 42 accuracy, which is all right compared to 0 0.4. But I will prefer a little bit better aim time. So I would choose better aim time. Uh, view range or stun duration? Obviously view range. This thing is blind. <laughs> 350 meters of view range. God. That is suck. <laughs> yeah, better view range. I'll take the stun. Just give me better view range. 350 is horrendous. Why the hell is it 350? Why the hell is the 176 like what? 180? Or 380? Yeah, 380. On the 176. It's 350 on 166. With a larger commander cupola for some reason. <laughs> what the hell are you doing in the larger commander cupola? Taking a dump? You have a larger commander cupola. You're supposed to see more. Nope. You have 30 meter less view range for some reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, the view range on the 166 really suck. They need to buff that up to uh, 380 or something. That, that really suck. So how much would I rate it overall? Ribbed for your pleasure. Uh, 10 degrees is dramatically good for the BZ-176. This thing having 10 degrees of gun depression means you won't likely hit the commander cupola or the loader cupola. Especially the loader cupola because how small it is. But... The cheek armor on this thing is also pretty dramatic. It's only 250, but it is sloped almost two dimensions. One to the side, one to a little bit onto the top, but yeah, this thing is surprisingly not half bad. It is a lot better than the Caliban. So with this thing, it is faster. So that's a good point. It has the rockets, which is also good. So I feel this thing is like an IS tank. It has a Commander Cupola weak spot, but it's a lot more protected on the other parts. So it could be like a fusion of an IS as of a design for the Commander Cupola, but with the speed of an IS-3 or something, and the gun depression of American tanks. Gun depression is scary. Speed is not half bad. Downside to this thing is it's pretty blind. <laughs> And a large commander cupola in the way, but maybe six, six point five. It's all right. It has a large alpha, and if the upper plate is one forty all the way around, then that is pretty good, especially with ten degrees of gun depression. You're not penetrating this thing unless you hit the commander cupola, but if it wiggles around, then it's hard to shoot. I say six point five, maybe six point two five. It's not crazy, right? But it's still decent. I think it's still decent. Oh, well, there you go, folks. The BZ-166, the normal tier 8. I'll cover the BZ-58. And the whole line is likely coming out late January, early February or so. Like with the Italians or the Italian heavy tanks or the Yo tanks. About the same time. So they're dumping a lot of the HD details and the rocket boosters, but they haven't mentioned the actual developer diary on the rocket booster for some reason. Maybe it's not historically correct or something. <laughs> but let me know uh, <laughs> all about the ribness of this vehicle. That's a meme. That is really a meme. But thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.